Blender, why is it so difficult for beginners? And who is this mysterious, handsome Swedish man? Would he be able to help me finally overcome my fear and slay the Blender Dragon once and for all? By the end of the video, we'll have the answers, along with a few new tricks and techniques I'll use for my first attempt at making an attack helicopter. Hello everyone and welcome. I'm Joe and this is the fourth devlog for Infinawar, the stylized, modern military, real-time tactics RPG I've been working on for the past two years. In the last devlog, I made a basic tank in ProBuilder, a package that allows you to make 3D models directly in the Unity editor. So what was wrong with ProBuilder? Why not just stick with that? Well, there's nothing wrong with ProBuilder per se. I probably could have stuck with it, at least for a little while, since nothing I was planning was highly detailed. But there are at least three big reasons to consider alternatives. One is power. As I mentioned last time, ProBuilder is really focused on grayboxing and prototyping levels so the tools it offers are better suited for that kind of work. You can make other things in it, but it's not designed around doing that efficiently. And there are some things that are nearly impossible, like sculpting highly detailed organic characters or creatures. I didn't plan on making any of those for this project, but I knew there might be other things down the line that ProBuilder might struggle to accommodate. The second reason is community. ProBuilder is a smaller, less well-known tool than the big names, so there's just less educational material out there, and a smaller community to support with issues. And because of the grayboxing and prototyping focus I mentioned earlier, there'd be even less material covering other topics. Oftentimes, it's a good idea to pick popular tools for exactly this reason. Not to follow what's cool and trendy, but because you'll have way more resources to draw from and people to help you out. Community's gonna end up playing a big role in improving my modeling skills, but we'll talk about that a little later. The third is transferability. ProBuilder is far from an industry standard, with tools and workflows fairly unlike general purpose modeling software out there. ProBuilder is also Unity specific, so if I ever worked on a different engine or in someone else's project, I might not be able to use ProBuilder at all. So learning ProBuilder would result in fewer transferable skills than choosing something else. Sure, plenty of general 3D modeling concepts and techniques might transfer, at least partially, but there's something to be said for becoming proficient with a widely used tool. You can put it on your resume, start a side hustle, or even turn it into a full-time gig. I wasn't really looking for a career change, but I'd much rather spend time building skills in something more widely applicable. ProBuilder just wasn't gonna check that box. There's other small reasons, but those are the big three. Power, community, and transferability. By the way, those three reasons are the same reasons I settled on developing games in Unity in the first place. That used to be a bit less controversial a topic than it is these days. Maybe I'll touch on that in a future video. Let me know in the comments if you want to hear me talk about choosing a game engine. So I had lots of good reasons to leave ProBuilder and find a different 3D modeling tool. A few people recommended Blender. It's free and open source, while tools like Maya and 3ds Max are crazy expensive. Even their indie versions are over $300. It's hard to argue with free. Blender also has a huge community. Blender is widely applicable too. Almost any 3D art job posting is going to mention Blender. And Blender has plenty of power. It's been in development for over 30 years, with all kinds of fancy bells and whistles. Sculpting, rigging, animation, simulations for fluid, cloth, hair, and a boatload of specialized tools for any kind of modeling you can think of. So I had a lot of good reasons to abandon ProBuilder, and a lot of good reasons to pick up Blender, but I didn't, at least at first, for one huge reason, fear. I was afraid of learning something new. ProBuilder was small and manageable. Its lack of power was a selling point. I couldn't get overwhelmed with it because there just wasn't that much to it. It was comfortable. It was safe. Blender is anything but. All that power Blender has comes at a steep cost, a legendary learning curve, especially for beginners. It's so bad, people even make memes about it. Day two, I should have made a donut. Now I face head on with the wrath of Blender and all its hardships. <laughs> 
In my last devlog, I called it the Blender Dragon and made it look pretty menacing. What is it about Blender that makes it so intimidating? Let's open up Blender and take a quick look. This isn't going to be a tutorial, I just want to give you a quick sense of what we're up against. Okay, there's a cube. That's nice. Not too bad so far. How do I move it? Hmm, not here. What is all this stuff? What are all these tabs? There's like a hundred little dropdowns here. Some of them even have more dropdowns inside of them. Blender isn't a dragon, it's a hydra. How much time is it going to take to learn all this? I can't even move a stupid cube. Okay, tutorials to the rescue. I said there was a huge community, right? Let's see what we can find. Oh, the infamous donut tutorial. I've heard about this. Let's see. 15 chapters, huh? That's a little worrisome. Wait, part one? How many parts are there? 14 videos? They're short though, right? <laughs> nope. Each one is like 20 minutes long. That's like five hours of tutorials just to make a donut. Ugh, maybe not. All right. Let's take one more crack at this. Hmm, I didn't see these before. Looks like a toolbar. Move? Oh, okay, that's like the transform tool in Unity. All right, I finally got this thing moving. Okay, rotate, scale. I'm used to those from Unity too. But how do I actually model something? I can do cubes in Unity already. Hmm, add cube. Maybe? Doesn't seem to be working. Maybe double click? No. Oh, drag does something. All right, I added another cube. This doesn't look like it's getting me any closer to modeling though. Wait, wasn't there a modeling tab? Oh, more tools. Okay, I think Pro Builder has some things like this. Inset faces, let's try this. Uh, it's not doing anything. Maybe this? No, all right, let's go back to move. Wait, what? Why is it doing that? Oh, why is it doing that? Ugh. So much for going it alone. I felt like the sorcerer's apprentice, dabbling with dark magic I didn't understand. Only the broom skipped past helping me around the castle and skipped straight to trying to drown me. This was demoralizing. Maybe if I spent dozens or hundreds of hours practicing, I could figure it out eventually, but I felt like I didn't have that kind of time. I guess I'll stick with Pro Builder for now. I started to doubt myself again. The voice in my head said, you're not an artist. You can't do this. You're pathetic. Give up now before you embarrass yourself. Before long, the YouTube algorithm started doing its thing, recommending me all kinds of 3D modeling videos based on my recent searching. This one in particular caught my eye. I had been considering adding a helicopter next, as that was another world in conflict unit I was eager to see if I could replicate. This looked like the low poly art style I was going for. And wow, 10 minutes? I think it took me 10 minutes just to figure out how to move the stupid cube. This has to be some kind of clickbait, right? It's actually a 10 minute time lapse of a multi hour modeling session. Fortunately, that skepticism turned out to be unwarranted. This was a video by Infenzia, the mysterious, handsome Swedish man from the beginning of the video. He runs a great YouTube channel focusing on low poly modeling and Blender, along with general Unity game development, music, sound effects, and more. If any of that sounds interesting to you, definitely check him out. And a big thanks to Infenzia, whose real name is Stefan, for allowing me to use some clips from his channel in this video. Anyway, this helicopter modeling video was part of his 10 minute modeling challenge, where he gives himself 10 real time minutes to model something in Blender. No time lapses, no cuts, just a live countdown clock and 10 minutes of raw Blender speed running. Ready, steady. Go! And we're off. Yes, it's counting. So let's go to edit and do auto mirror, tab A, scale everything uh, up a little bit, scale Y. Let's extrude this one, make the front of the helicopter, scale down. Let's get the back of the helicopter, E to extrude, S to scale, E to extrude, S to scale. 
I was blown away by what I saw. He was able to get rough shapes defined so quickly and made it look easy. Control R, let's do some loop cuts here. Control R again. Here we'll get uh, Control R again. <laughs> here, let's get a fin going here. So we'll do... In 10 minutes as promised, he had modeled the helicopter. Obviously not to a super high quality level, but plenty good enough for a prototype or for a newbie modeler just learning the ropes. I like that he had some kind of extension showing all of his keystrokes, so that I could go back and replay or pause sections to see how he was doing things. One thing I really liked is how he talks through what he's doing out loud, as best he can under the short time limit anyway. Let's get these vertices selected, so I'll just shift select these, move these down, move this out, get a little bit of a roundness to the chopper. And something he said over and over stood out to me. E to extrude, S to scale, 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 E to extrude, S to scale up. And here, E to extrude up, S to scale it. Over and over, like a monk chanting a mantra, E to extrude, S to scale, E to extrude, S to scale. In fact, he has a whole video modeling a spaceship where he's only allowed to extrude in scale. He even put it on a shirt and a coffee mug. That's when it hit me. All the complexity in Blender, he's barely using any of it. You can get so much done with just a few simple tools and hotkeys. Fortunately, Infenzia has a full low poly modeling tutorial. It's an hour and 20 minutes, but at this point I was convinced that this man knew the secrets I wanted to learn, and I had a pretty good feeling that I was gonna have more than a donut to show by the end of it. This video is really good, by the way. So if you're interested in learning low poly modeling in Blender, I highly recommend you check it out. Every minute is densely packed with techniques for doing all kinds of things, and I still refer to it from time to time when I need more tools for my toolkit. The Blender Dragon may have seemed invincible before, but I was starting to see that its armor had some cracks. Armed with this tutorial and the 10 minute challenge helicopter as an example, I was ready to try my hand at a helicopter of my own. I'm not gonna lie, it took me a lot longer than 10 minutes, probably a few hours since I was still learning the tools. But that's not the point, the speed will come with time. Seeing someone experienced go through their workflow from start to finish was eye-opening. More than just learning how individual tools worked, it gave me concrete context on how to fit them all together and how you can approach solving different problems by combining them. I didn't want to copy his design exactly, and I wanted mine to have a bit more of a militaristic look. So I imported a few diagrams of an Apache attack helicopter to try to emulate. One of the great things about trying to model military vehicles is there's a ton of detailed, properly scaled, orthogonal perspective diagrams to work from. This might seem a little bit like cheating, but I think it's fine to sort of trace 2D or 3D references while you're learning. It's an intuitive way to learn about form, proportions, topology, and so on. I decided to leave off the rotors and plan to add and animate them later in Unity. Texturing can wait too. I wanted to keep things dead simple. No landing gear, doors, or many details at all, aside from cockpit windows and engines. All I needed right now was the basic shapes to prototype with. I can do a nicer looking model later once the game needs more fidelity. You're gonna see me take this approach a lot. Quick and dirty for prototyping now, and polish or redo it later when it makes sense. Spending a lot of effort on something right now that might need to change completely or end up getting thrown out later isn't a good use of a part-time, solo indie dev's extremely limited time. After importing into Unity, okay, admittedly, this was a bit of a stumbling block. Apparently there's a holy war among all the 3D modeling programs and game engines about which axis should be up and which direction is forward. Get it together, game industry. Credit to the awesome Freya Holmer for making this chart. I'll be needing Freya's expertise for that procedural building video I keep promising. We'll get there, I promise. Anyway, I eventually figured out the right way to import into Unity. I added some animated textured disks for rotors, and added the same nav mesh agent component and movement scripts the tanks had, but with a bit of a vertical offset from the ground. This is far from a perfect solution, but as you're probably used to hearing me say, it's good enough for now. Just like that, I had helicopters zooming over my hills, and I thought it just looked awesome. It's not quite world in conflict yet, but it's starting to look a tiny bit more like it each day. Could I have done all this in Pro Builder? Almost certainly, and back then, probably much more quickly too, since I already knew my way around Pro Builder. But looking back, I'm glad I made the switch. I've gotten much faster in Blender, and after a bit of practice, I've learned to appreciate the power it offers. But most importantly, the Blender Dragon was vanquished. Well, my fear of it anyway. It's still got plenty of heads, but one thing at a time. 
And a big thanks again to Infenzia for allowing me to use some of his videos in this devlog and for giving me the tools I needed to overcome my next hurdle in game development. I think for the next video, we'll take a break from the history lessons, zoom out and talk about the big picture. What's my plan for the game as a whole? What'll be in the game and just as important, what won't be in the game? Let me know what you're hoping to see and I'll try to include it in the next video. Be sure to check out the full playlist of earlier episodes if you're new to the devlog. And thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video.